Okay, so in this particular video, we are going to be looking at the idea of um, free trade and um, putting some tariffs on this free trade in order to restrict it. And the reasons that countries do that are often to improve the balance of payments. And so you need to be able to go through and see what's going to happen to imports in this particular case. And then we're going to extend that um, because there could be things like retaliation. And so what's going to happen to your exports? Um, but before you even get to that point, I would say that sometimes you get questions which ask you, discuss the implications of um, a country putting a tariff on. And you've got to go back to the idea that free trade is really beneficial to countries and to the world economy. In other words, that um, as the World Bank says, that it is trade that is the engine of growth. And you've got to, I think, be able to explain quite um, quickly and succinctly three different um, points here. I think you need to explain, number one, the benefits of comparative advantage. You need to be able to explain very quickly how uh, if countries specialize and then they trade at some opportunity cost between the two uh, ratios of the country, then there's going to be a consumption possibility beyond the production possibility. So that's a quite important one. If you don't know that, get back to that video. Uh, secondly, the advantage of trade is that you open up your firms in your country and your industries to more competitive power. In other words, you've got more competitors and competition leads to more efficiency. So I think that would be your um, second argument. And then thirdly, you'd be saying that if a country has got international trade and it opens itself up to um, a world economy, then your firms can become bigger and then you get your scale economies coming through. So you can enjoy economies of scale, lower average total costs, which means that the profitability of those firms are likely to rise, in which case they can invest and reinvest and so become even more competitive in future time periods. So hopefully that's um, um, a good introduction as to why is free trade a good idea. But now we're going to come on to um, this idea here of a tariff on free trade. OK, now this is a diagram where there is no trade going on in the country whatsoever. And so the assumption that we make when we put a tariff on is that there is some world price which is below the price that would be charged in our market and that this supply that's coming in from the world is perfectly elastic in the sense that this market as a country, this is our country market here, um, is so small, it's not going to affect the world price. OK, so that's quite important um, that you, you understand that. And then obviously, as hopefully you know, if you open yourself up to trade, then the demand is going to extend. And so there's going to be an increase in demand and you end up at a point Q2 um, being demanded in your uh, own market. However, at this demand of OQ2, OQ1 is produced by the domestic suppliers. The reason for that is that as we increase the um, output here, you have to question who is going to be producing this, who's going to be um, satisfying this market, and the domestic producers can produce at lower price than the world market. So it's the domestic producers that will supply the market up to this point. Then after that point, we move on to the world supply curve. So domestic supply is from here to here and imports are from there to there. And what I usually do is I bring in a combined supply curve. In other words, this is the supply curve that actually affects this market. This part here is the domestic firm supplying it. This part here is the world firm supplying it. OK, so what happens if we put a, a tariff on? So if we put a tariff on, what you can see is that the tariff will raise the world price. So the world price with a tariff is higher than the um, price without the tariff. And so PT is the tariff price. So therefore, as you see here, the, there's going to be a fall in demand. There's going to be a contraction in demand. So the consumers 
are going to be paying this higher price. And so there's a reduction in the demand uh, of the domestic market. In addition, we see that the higher price here has now meant that domestic suppliers who were not supplying it when we didn't have a tariff on are now supplying the market because if the world price is up here with the tariff on, we're going to be buying from our domestic suppliers at this point. And so this is why you have um, an increase in the domestic supply and it's an extension of supply up their supply curve and increase here of the supply in the market. OK, now, again, what I usually do is I put in a nice um, new supply curve, called it the combined supply curve. So before a tariff, um, what would happen is that domestic firms produce up to Q1 and imports at Q1 to Q2. But applying a tariff means that the world price rises, domestic output rises to Q3. That's the increase. Domestic demand falls to Q4. There's the reduction in domestic demand. And so the objective of the tariff, which is to reduce imports, has worked because now there are fewer imports this amount here. So there's old imports, new imports. So there's a restriction of trade. OK, now let's look at the effect of that on different um, parts of the market and the analysis should really be done in terms of the consumer, the firm, the government and efficiency. And that's what we're going to look at. Consumers. OK. There's an increase in the price of the consumer. So therefore, there's a fall in the consumer surplus by this area here. So before the tariff, the consumer surplus was this big triangle here, the difference between what they were willing and able to pay for the good and what they had to pay, which is down here. Okay, so that triangle here was the old consumer surplus. This triangle here is the new consumer surplus. So the difference between those two triangles is this box here, which is, the, is a fall in the consumer surplus. Consumers pay a higher price there's a reduction in their surplus, which is reduced economic welfare. Higher prices means there's a fall in their real income. Therefore, they can't actually afford as many other goods and services, a fall in their living standards. Might affect some uh, socioeconomic groups more than others. So you can bring in a, a bit of a poverty thing if you want. It's going to cause inflation as well in the marketplace. What's the effect then on domestic firms. This is the second part of your analysis. So you saw that when we put the tariff on, there was an extension along the supply curve. So there's an increase in the output for domestic firms. There's an increase, this area here, of producer surplus. The surplus was this triangle here. Now the surplus is that triangle there. And so the difference between them is the increase in the producer surplus. That's a benefit. There's increased output, increased employment, more profit, and hence possibly more investment, and therefore makes these firms uh, more competitive in the future. It's often one of the reasons that tariffs are put on is to uh, help um, beginning industry, infant industries, or industries in sunset industries. In other words, firms that are um, the industries in a decline, and they want to try and help them to become more competitive. What about the government? Well, on the government sector, this is the amount of the tariff between here and here. This is the tariff revenue, therefore, because these are the imports. So that's the new imports. And every one of those imports here gives the government a, a vertical distance here, which is the amount of the tariff. So that box there measures the tariff revenue. OK, so increased tariff revenue. There was increased GDP because the output of the industries in the UK, for example, if this was the UK market, the domestic market, uh, increased GDP, more employment, maybe less unemployment. We will look at that when we start to um, 
question this, okay, and do some evaluation on it. Um, there's going to be higher tax revenue, not only from the tariff, but also from the increased um, output and employment within the uh, domestic market. Maybe there's going to be lower spending on unemployment as well. So it has a fiscal effect on the government sector. However, there is going to be higher inflation. So even so, even though there's benefits here, benefits here, benefits here, um, higher inflation is a drawback. But remember, the key thing is from the government, they wanted to try to solve the balance of payments deficit, and that's been cut. OK, lastly, we look at welfare. Now, this is where what we do as an economist is we look at this fall in the consumer surplus, and that's a fall in economic welfare. OK, but then we split it into four parts. And the first part that we look at is this increase in the producer surplus. So all that's happened, and I put it over here, this is the fall in the consumer surplus, which is this um, orangey yellow box. And it's simply been transferred to the producers. So that's not a loss of welfare to the whole economy. It's just a transfer of welfare from one party, the consumers, to another party in your economy, the producers. OK, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, we then say, well, hold on. Out of this whole box here, there is also a tariff area and that tariff area has gone to the government. So that box out of this whole area, that is again a transfer. So it's a transfer, you know, from the consumers to the uh, government in this case. So it's not a loss of welfare. So these are just transfers of welfare, not losses of welfare. But you will see that you have a triangle here, triangle A, which is a loss of welfare. And you have triangle B, which is also a loss of welfare. So overall, there's a loss of consumer surplus, a loss of welfare by the whole triangle, uh, sorry, area here. That's offset by higher producer surplus. So that bit there is just transferred within the economy. Higher tariff. So that bit there has been um, just a transfer. But you're still left with these two what we call welfare loss triangles. And they're really important that you are able to demonstrate that effect in the exam, that the welfare of the economy, when you put a tariff on, does go down.